Buried inside this case here is the ASUS Z390 Strix E. It's a rather interesting kind of gaming motherboard as they brand it and actually fairly highly priced for being part of their Strix lineup. If you're new to the ASUS kind of motherboard lineup, generally speaking, their ROG specific branded board or Republic of Gamers are their highest end, most feature packed boards. And then they have their Strix lineup, which is a slightly cut down, but generally still pretty great uh, lineup of motherboards with generally a little lower price tags to go with it. To give you a quick rundown of the board, we obviously have support for Intel's 9th and 8th gen CPUs, including the 9900K, which is a bit of a power hog, although we'll talk about that in a second. You obviously still have the same 1151 socket in the center, four DDR4 RAM DIMM slots, and actually two M.2 slots, both of which are heat synced. One of them is just below the chipset and is a 110 millimeter slot, whereas the top one is the more standard 80 millimeter slot that the majority of your M.2 SSDs would fit in just Fine. Next to the M.2 slots, we have two X16 size slots. The top one is full X16 electrically and goes straight to the CPU. The middle one goes to the CPU as well, although it's X8 electrically. And if you're running them together, so if you're running two graphics cards in them, for example, then they'd be running an X8 and X8 each. And then the bottom slot is, while well, it's X16 in size, it's not a reinforced slot and it's uh, only X4 electrically and goes through the chipset along with basically everything else on the board, including both of the M.2. Two slots. That does mean that both the M.2 slots are bandwidth constricted, so bear that in mind if you're planning on picking up any Z390 board. Uh, if you're using multiple M.2 slots and anything else, then some of the PCIe slots will turn off, for example, because they're through PCIe switches, and otherwise the rest of them will be fairly bandwidth limited if you're hitting your M.2s pretty hard. Up at the top left-hand corner of the board, you have a single 8-pin power connector, which is just fine even for a 9900K, and then you have a bracket that is essentially meant to be used for the included, I guess, 80 odd mil fan uh, to give better airflow over the VRMs. We'll talk more about the VRMs in a second, but suffice to say, it's a pretty impressive configuration. In terms of the rest of the stuff that's on the board, you have a USB type C front panel header, a Thunderbolt connector down the bottom, and uh, two standard RGB connectors, as well as one addressable RGB connector just below the SATA ports. You have six SATA ports. Uh, you also have, obviously, your usual USB 2 and USB 3 front panel headers down the bottom. You also have the Supreme FX audio setup, which is actually pretty nice as well, with a full 7.1 audio with SPDAF on the back. And what we're talking about the back, you also have a couple of display outputs, you have gigabit ethernet, you have CMVI Wi-Fi built in, which is nice to see. You also have USB 2, USB 3, USB type C, and a PS2 mouse combo port as well, if you need one. Now, as I said, this board supports Intel's 9th gen 9900K, but can it handle it? Well, as I said, the VRM setup is pretty great, so the overall answer is yes. I don't have any information from ASUS here, so I'm just going off what's on the board and research on the components, but basically the, the controller you, they're using is a DigiPlus VRM ASP1400 CTB, which is, as far as I'm aware, a rebranded IR35201 or 35203. Either way, that means that it's an eight-channel eight, uh, eight channel kind of setup with the, the PWM to the MOSFETs. And those MOSFETs, there's a total of 10 of them in what looks to be an 8 plus 2, although I believe it's a doubled 8 plus 2. So I believe it's something along the lines of 4 plus 2 actual, but then uh, a uh, 8 plus 2 kind of final result. But either way, that is the, the setup. The, the MOSFETs they're using are ncp 30205s which are high and low side MOSFETs together and those can do 45 amps each, which means that this is a pretty impressive setup. Now, what does all of that mean for real world? Well, testing with a 9900K, I saw basically no increase in temperature on the VRMs, even when hitting the 9900K full load at full stock boost. Now, of course, the, you can obviously overclock pretty well on the board, and in terms of temperatures, I think the maximum the VRM set was about 50 degrees Celsius, which is nothing for VRMs, and that's without the fan installed. So if you really wanted to push a 9900K, Okay you could do, and I think you do pretty well with that. Speaking of overclocking, this board actually has a pretty interesting feature that none of the other kind of competitors on the market have, and that is ASUS's new AI overclocking feature. This is something that appears on the side, uh, the sort of sidebar, if you like, where you normally see, you know, your CPU frequency and temperature and memory frequency and stuff, but you now have a, a, a little prediction window. So there's a couple of things I want to explain here. First of all, the SIL is effectively your 
silicon quality. So it's estimating how good of an overclocker your chip will be. The higher the percentage, the better the overclocker the chip is supposedly. That's not necessarily a kind of guarantee that if you have a you know, 95 or 100% kind of SIL chip, then you're gonna get you know a million gigahertz. It just means that your chip is more likely to be happier to overclock. You also have a cooler point score. That is essentially just how well your cooler can do uh, at cooling your CPU. And that is something that the, the system or the motherboard learns from as you load up the CPU and all that sort of stuff. So in theory, putting a better cooler gets you a better score, which means the uh, system will be able to auto overclock your CPU even more. Now you do have to go in and manually set it to auto overclock your CPU if you want that. You put, put AI optimized in the overclocking settings and then it will do it all for you, but it's actually a pretty good and pretty stable overall setup, which is actually quite nice to see. The rest of the BIOS is fairly standard. It's the usual sort of menu system interface and there really isn't much changed here besides that AI overclocking feature. So suffice to say, it's not as user friendly as MSI's, but it's a little bit easier to get to things like overclocking uh, than uh, you know, people like Gigabytes, but it's still a decent user experience, although not the most friendly thing in the world. So the roundup here is that this is an expensive motherboard. It's selling for about £230 at the time of filming in the UK, which makes it a, well, pretty expensive board. The Gigabyte Z390 Master Board, which is one of their highest end, in fact, I think it is their highest end Z390 board, is only £45 more, and that does have a good number more features. And while the VRM setup isn't necessarily, you know, worse on this, that one is slightly better. So if you're going for some extreme overclocking, that one does have a few extra features, a few uh, kind of details that might be a little bit better for you. But um, overall, it's it's definitely expensive, especially if you're being a Strix board, but it does have a few features to back that up with the AI, AI overclocking, and mostly a great VRM setup and some nice overall connectivity too. You still do have the problems of, as I said, that bandwidth limitation when it comes to say your M.2 slots and stuff like that, as not only do your M.2s and you know your lower PCIe slots Lots, but also all of your IO, so all of the, the Wi-Fi, all of your gigabit ethernet, your USB ports, your Thunderbolts, all of that goes through the chipset as well, which means that you're gonna be limiting your M.2s, basically whatever you do if you're using multiple or even just one high-end one in here. So do bear that in mind, but otherwise, if you're looking for a Z390 board, and especially if you do wanna stick on the ASUS side of things, then this is a really nice option, if a bit expensive. Would I put this on my desk? Um, probably. It's a, it's a nice board. It's a little bit lacking in I.O. in terms of USB ports. I tend to use a fair number of them, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. I'd be fairly happy to recommend it if you're looking for a Z390 board. And uh, yeah, it's just generally pretty good. So with that said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this a board you're interested in? Are you interested in the Z390 Master more because it's not that much more expensive? Or is, you know, you're just not interested in Z390 in general? You're sticking with your new Ryzen CPU, for example. Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to buy one of these boards or just check out pricing when and where you watch this, then take a look at the link in the description down below where you can check that out. You can also check out the rest of the links down there too if you want to support the channel. You can check out the Patreon link where you can support me directly and thank you to all the patrons who do you can also check out you know amazon overclock educate affiliate links those massively help me out they don't cost you anything so thank you to everyone who uses those you can check out the merch where you can pick up a t-shirt like this one or non text maybe related designs just go have a look uh, there's also private internet access humble bundle and a load of other stuff that you can check out down there too if you're new to the channel feel free to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one every monday wednesday and friday with live streams every thursday night and there are plenty of other videos that you can check out over there too Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video.